Uh, my name is Anna Ardin and I come from Forum, which is the civil society umbrella of Sweden. And we arrange seminars uh, that we call the Forum of the Morning, Morron Forum, about one time a month. And this is a part of our series. And today we're very happy that we have guests from Russia and from Finland. A big applause for them. Uh, and I will introduce you, so can you just wave when I say your name? We have uh, Paulina Lukima, uh, Anna Skvortsva, who will also hold the main presentation, Tatiana Burieva, uh, Semyon Nikonov, Olga Gracheva, Marina Kudyakiva, Irina Tsukova, and Galina Kurganova. So we have a, a broad representation from many different cities and NGOs in, in Russia that we will hear more from uh, later. But first of all, I would like to introduce you, Paulina, to tell a little bit about the project that we are doing together. Okay, thank you so much. So um, I am Paulina, I'm from Finland. I represent the Finnish NGDO platform to the EU. And uh, we are, as we are all neighbors, we thought that uh, it's important to, especially in this, uh, this turbulent time, to, to hold a uh, good dialogue with our neighbors. So we have a project called Non-State Actors, Partnership and Skills for Sustainable Development. And uh, we have three countries, Sweden, Finland and Russia. And uh, um, so um, Anna uh, from... Uh, from uh, NGO Development Center from St. Petersburg is one of our partners. And uh, our project is funded by Nordic Council of Ministers and will last for one year. Just, uh, I will just tell shortly. Um, so yes, we noticed that we have increasingly common challenges uh, in all these three countries. So that was the starting point of the whole um, project and we want to make sustainable, peaceful and prosperous development of the area. So uh, that was like the starting point of the whole whole project and um, we want to exchange experiences, uh, learn from each other and increase the networks of these countries and of course the NGOs working in these countries. And the main, main goal would be, of course, uh, to build capacity of NGOs, especially in northwest Russia, that is uh, one of the uh, areas. And these seven NGOs uh, coming from these areas are all active in our project activities. So a uh, bigger goal is uh, stronger civil society in all these three countries. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so now we will start about 15 minutes uh, with uh, Anna Skvortsova and you will introduce yourself a bit more. And then we will have uh, interviews with the other representatives from Russia. And, uh, and after this, Paulina will comment out from the Finnish perspective. And the last um, half an hour, we'll have um, opportunity for you in the audience. And I know that you have a lot of experience from, from the Russian civil society and from, from research about the civil society, etc. So uh, I will give the stage to you, Anna. Welcome. Thank you. I think I need to switch on. Thank you. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, dear friends. Thank you very much for coming. It's a big privilege for us to be with you, and uh, we are very pleased that you are interested in what is happening in Russian civil society because we are never bo bo bored, <laughs> and <laughs> there is a lot of things go going there. If it's too loud, please tell me. And probably it's not so um, mm, uh, good uh, communication channels that we can uh, say what is happening. So this is a really uh, important possibility for us. My name is Anna Skvortsova. I work in so-called research center in St. Petersburg. It was established 24 years ago um, in order to encourage uh, uh, NGOs um, and um, that they are professional and they work um, for civil society. Uh, so uh, we have a website, it's possible to go there and see our public reports and other information. Next slide, please. Uh, my presentation will be in three, ta three parts. Uh, the first one, uh, I would like to uh, draw some, some picture of what is happening in our society today and then uh, go switch to uh, institutionalized uh, third sector. 
uh, and uh, then um, share with you some thoughts what are our common challenges and opportunities how we can uh, uh, cooperate together and the first uh, slide is uh, from St. Petersburg it's meeting that was in March this year uh, and it was uh, um, straight 30 years after the first uh, uh, civil protest in New Russia uh, that happened in 1987 and it was for defense of a uh, historical building uh, Hotel Angleterre and people in March, uh, more than 3,000 people came uh, and, and um, uh, gave their voices for defense of uh, culture, science and uh, civil society in St. Petersburg. This is one picture. The second picture, this is also uh, from St. Petersburg from April uh, 2016 and it was memorial plaque uh, f f um, to Carl Gustav Mannerheim who studied in St. Petersburg and uh, in April 2016 there was a plaque that was um, placed uh, to a building uh, of a military academy when, where he studied. And uh, immediately when uh, it, it appeared, this plaque, um, uh, some uh, activists of uh, other Russia and other uh, mm, political forces, uh, they started uh, repeatedly doused it with paint and activists of other Russia has chopped uh, this plaque with uh, an axe. And in uh, October 2016, plaque was transported to the Museum of the First World War outside of St. Petersburg in Tsarskaya Silo. So there is a question if this is also civil society and we see in our countries, not only in Russia, but, but in many countries, this tendency of growing popularity of far right and far left parties and illiberal movements and uh, we see that people have uh, great il uh, disillusionment with liberalism, human rights and democratic ideals and uh, these provide fertile grounds to this process. So what our researchers say about uh, our society? Um, there was um, interesting uh, research um, of uh, the Institute of Sol so Sociology of Russian Academy of Sciences a few years ago um, and they uh, um, make, uh, they, they try to find uh, Russian civil society, what it is. And there were some interesting results. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, they ask, uh, mm, uh, they say that Russia is not inert and not apathetic. Uh, and um, actually the um, um, problem is that soci society is divided and when they asked um, people if they think if Russia is a democratic country, there was half yes and half no. And if uh, this kind of division of public opinion happens, sociologists diagnosed it with uh, so-called anomia. So it's lack of shared values and lack of understanding. And we see that a lot of uh, Russians, is 37% Russians, are involved of some part of activities. Uh, but uh, mm, if there is no space for free from politics, and if there is, is a lack of legal ways uh, expression of protests, uh, mm, expert says that so society could collapse, and some of active citizens doesn't automatically form uh, uh, civil society. So now. Um, a previous slide, please. Mm -hmm. mm, I don't see it here. Okay, so there are some uh, next. Then mm -hmm. uh, there are some common challenges uh, that we see in uh, policy level, on public level, and uh, on level of uh, civil society organizations. Mm -hmm. And now some such statistics. Uh, uh, we have um, two thousand two hundred um, uh, twenty-three. Uh, non-profit organizations that are registered in Russia and it's interesting that this number is quite stable during last five, six years and uh, we can say that Russian uh, NGO sector is quite stable in size but at the same time internal composition is fluid and most um, uh, non-profits themselves are short-lived. Next slide please. Uh, what is our context in uh, uh, meaning of a legal framework and political conditions? Uh, it's extensive legislation that regulates non-profit sector in Russia. We have 15 legal forms of non-profits and huge list of special federal laws. Uh, 
uh, and um, we uh, th think that the most important line uh, is between uh, so-called good and bad uh, non-profits, and it is reflected in legislation in four different lists of non-profits. So-called good uh, non-profits, uh, it's so-called uh, socially oriented NGOs, and it's uh, almost half of registered uh, NGOs and they cover a wide variety of, of fields, and it's supported by federal and regional governments uh, on competition basis. And a um, uh, few years ago, it was accepted important law on uh, social services that uh, open uh, possibilities for NGOs to come to the market of social uh, providers of social services. Uh, part of them, and the second subtype, it's uh, non-profit social service providers in its new type of non-profits introduced uh, this summer and is a perspective measure for the development of the part of, uh, on, of NGO, uh, NGOs working in social sphere. And uh, um, non-profit social service providers can get long-term gr grants for their activities and uh, uh, quite a lot of support. Uh, but uh, ne need to say that at the moment only 15 uh, NGOs get the status of providers of public benefit services. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and uh, on the other side uh, of the spectrum, we have so-called foreign agents and undesirable organizations that are uh, under state restrictions. Uh, that were set by the law, uh, so-called foreign agent law, that was accepted uh, straight five years ago, and anti-gay propaganda law, patriotic stop list, and others. And uh, if the law of foreign agents uh, just complicated but not prohibits the work of non-profits, the law on, on the undesirable organizations that was accepted in 2015 does. 11 international NGOs are practically prohibited in Russia because the prosecutor's office found them to be threatening the country's constitu constitutional order. And all of them have been working in human rights, economical and civil society development in Russia for years. And since the, since the law on foreign agents was adopted in 2012, uh, 154 uh, NGOs were included to the list. Today it's only 88 NGOs and the rest of uh, them were excluded from the list mainly because of stop having foreign funding. Um, and uh, among uh, NGOs who are in the list, there are think tanks, uh, social NGOs, environmental NGOs, of, co of course, sorry for of course, human rights NGOs, uh, mm, and uh, s uh, mm, it's very worrying tendency that similar law on foreign agents was accepted in Hungary in April this year. It's a uh, uh, law uh, not on foreign agents, but uh, uh, all uh, Hungarian NGOs uh, who get uh, financial support from abroad, more than 23 or 26,000 euros, they have to register as an NGOs uh, uh, getting financial support from abroad. Uh, so we see that restrictions toward uh, NGOs in many countries uh, happen now. Next slide, please. There are several slides that I will not go through. If you are interested in the de details, you can get it from organizers. It's about what it really means uh, for an agent. Next slide, please. This is how register looks. It's a um, register of foreign agents, Ministry of Justice. Next slide, please. There, there are, there are uh, many consequences of this. Next slide, please. And uh, of course, uh, impact to the society is this chilling effect uh, and uh, shrinking space for civic activism and uh, dissemination of mistrust. And um, of course, it's this division uh, that we see in, in uh, society and uh, splitting the sector for black, black and white NGOs. And we see that there is a tendency of building so-called new uh, civil society controlled by the state. Yeah. Next slide, please. Uh, I would like to uh, share with you some important things because these challenges uh, pushes us to push us to uh, think about how we can develop in these uh, turbulent times. And uh, the first thing that we need to do and what, what we do is new fundraising and PR strategies. Uh, uh, we need to diverse, uh, di uh, have diverse uh, 
uh, resources for funding. And um, I would like to um, um, show you one uh, good publication. It's uh, about new fundraising and, and PR strategies that was published uh, last year. And it's mm, available also in internet. It's, this book is also here. And uh, also, uh, we started a program in our organization of uh, support of social entrepreneurship in NGOs. And uh, it is very important because NGOs need to see uh, another, uh, another uh, ways of funding. And one of them is that they start to do something to produce. And in our program, one NGO uh, started very nice uh, social enterpri uh, enterprise that uh, uh, disabled people do this kind of very nice uh, models of St. Petersburg uh, houses and it's very nice souvenir not from China as usually you, you can see on the streets but uh, really made by people of St. Petersburg. Uh, next thing on a positive trend is volunteering more and more especially young people uh, are involved in volunteering. Then uh, important um, tendency is that uh, in spite of the world trend of decreasing private donations in Russia, it rises. And uh, it, it last year it was twice more, 17% of people s uh, said that they participate some, some ways in charities. Although of course Russia is still very low in the world giving index. Then uh, Global charity events, and you have some on the on the slide. You have some uh, examples. They became popular very quickly. Uh, then um, we can say that general acknowledgement of non-profit activity is slowly but growing, uh, and people are not anymore afraid of the words foundation, volunteers, charity. And uh, the last and but not least is unique phenomenon of uh, local philanthropy development in regions, small industrial and non-industrial towns, single industry towns and on in uh, rural uh, areas. And they become main drivers of so social change and uh, activation of local resources. They create an environment for development of new civic initiatives. And we have now 70 active community foundations and uh, interregional uh, community um, uh, alliances. Next slide, please. If you are interested more uh, uh, on uh, where uh, they are located, it's possible to have this. I will not stop here. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Next slide. And uh, so uh, I would like to say that um, uh, we have uh, we Russian and. Uh, European NGOs, we have some common challenges uh, that are financial by different reasons. It's state support and political challenges. It's uh, growing uh, conservatism and uh, xenophobia rising in society. And it's a uh, um, question how to develop in this hostile in environment, uh, how to motivate uh, volunteers, how to keep them, how to use new technologies. Uh, and um, we have also common solutions that, that, that are possible and that are necessary. It's consolidation of civil societies, may, uh, establishing coalitions, uh, new ways of uh, working with societies and strengthening of our social bases, new communication uh, channels, new language that we need in order that people know, understand what we do. Uh, as I said before, new fundraising strategies and new organizational models cooperation uh, um, also with, for example, with business companies um, and so on. So what we can together, I'm finishing. Uh, we see that these very uh, uh, tough international relationships uh, that uh, uh, are now um, between our countries, uh, it worsens situation uh, with international cooperation for Russian NGOs. It's not safe anymore to do uh, to be involved in international cooperation because you can be easily labeled as foreign agent and then you are limited in your activities. Uh, uh, s but it's very important that in spite of this, we exchange information that we, we know uh, 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 what, what is really happening and we can counter one-sided inf information. 
and it's possible through joint in international projects and its uh, mm, programs of cross-board cooperation, its Nordic Council of minister, Ministers, mm, then uh, European uh, Union, uh, European Commission programs, um, uh, and uh, programs of uh, very uh, different uh, ministries of foreign affairs that also have programs uh, that uh, allows uh, cooperation mm, of their NGOs with uh, Russian NGOs. Of course, we need to be very thoughtful about communi communication channels and safety. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm, it's important that we exchange, exchange, I think that there is something, do you hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, okay. okay. So uh, that we exchange the best practices in partnership projects and build uh, bridges between Russian NGOs and international NGOs uh, and uh, establish networks. And I would like to say that um, there is one very important platform. It's uh, EU-Russia Civil Society uh, Forum uh, that was established six years ago. And it's a very good platform uh, from uh, that was um, initiated by NGOs um, themselves. So it's uh, important that we prevent isolation of uh, uh, Russian NGOs. And uh, it, uh, this all will uh, allow us to build networks of solidarity and mutual support and develop uh, also personal trust, not only on a level of organizations, but uh, on, on personal human level. Last slide. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Anna. We will get back to you. Uh, very soon, but I would like you to give your microphone to Marina uh, a while, and I would like to start with you, Olga. Uh, I would like to start with you on stage, since you're close to me now. There you go. So come up, Thank you. on the stage. So, you, your name is Olga. Yes, I'm Olga. And where do you come from? Uh, I, ca uh, I come from uh, uh, Leningrad region, so uh, area around St. Petersburg is called Leningrad region, and Leningrad region is divided on 18 districts, so I live in one of these districts, and uh, I'm director of NGO, um, which is um, uh, trying uh, to solve a lot of problems through social cultural projects, so through culture to uh, better situation with NGO and civil society. And to develop of small territories. Mm -hmm. and, and more exactly, what do you do? What kind of projects? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what kind of projects? So, uh, no, we are really a cultural center, mul multidisciplinary cultural center. And uh, we try to be a resource center who show uh, and to s who support uh, uh, development through cultural uh, things. So, we can, uh, for example, we make projecting. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, we consider that most uh, s some problems uh, um, uh, concerning uh, our society is passiveness of young people, of passiveness of people, uh, not enough um, uh, responsibility for um, making changes in life uh, of um, uh, their own life. So we try to uh, show uh, uh, and to activate through cultural uh, things. For example, if we make project uh, uh, about wood, we try to show to young people how it's possible to work with wood, how what is possible to make how to, how to make better environment uh, in uh, their own small village, uh, that it's possible to find the work with wood, so any kind of such things. But also uh, speaking about, for example, international projects and uh, maybe something near to what was Anna telling before. Uh, for example, uh, we made... Uh, uh, no, no, they want us to change the microphone. Mm. I'm sorry. So there you go. Thank you. Uh, we also try to... Uh, make our people uh, to understand uh, um, how live people in nearest countries. So, for example, we uh, uh, made a project uh, um, when we show to uh, uh, organize a, a kind of exchange program for 15 people from our villages to show how cultural centers in Sweden and in Norway, Norway um, do their activities uh, to change 
life in small territories. It was very effective. And uh, speaking, for example, about this project, which was uh, supported by Ministry of Northern Countries, at uh, uh, first, uh, it, it's a kind of initiative uh, from people to higher level. So we went to Sweden, uh, not far from Göteborg, and uh, to Norway, made acquaintance with small cultural centers. Then next stage, we made some projects together. We made exhibitions in Russia, uh, we made exhibition in uh, Sweden. Then we made acquaintance uh, our municipalities. So it, it's really strange uh, that uh, the same situation we saw in Russia or in Sweden. When we came as a group uh, to Sweden, uh, uh, to small village near Göteborg, Municipality came for the first time to the cultural center stone zone, which was existing maybe for 10 years. So the head of municipality came because Russian people came. So, and it was very interesting. She spent whole day with us, visiting other cultural centers around. Yes, it was uh, good uh, for uh, Swedish cultural center. It was interesting for us. And we were speaking about how municipality can support uh, and how we can collaborate and how culture can sa change uh, life uh, in the municipality. Of course, some nice things then later happened for the cultural center stone zone. Uh, but also then we invited, they were, in municipality was interested about collaboration with the uh, municipality of our region. So we invited municipality from this village, from this municipality to our region. And then uh, it was very interesting meeting uh, with in Russia, in St. Petersburg, uh, even in government, not only with our municipality. And now we continue this uh, collaboration. But uh, so uh, speaking about different things, so uh, young people who participated in our project, they get a lot of uh, information, uh, uh, new experience. And now, for example, we have good volunteers in our uh, organization. And we have new cultural projects and new cultural products and exhibitions and events for our village. And um, uh, some ideas were brought for, for development. So something like that, it works. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, uh, that's one of my questions uh, with Anna later on about um, how, what you need from other countries, and I think just exchanging is a very good example of what, uh, um, what you are describing here. Uh, from so wh what we need uh, from the cult yeah, point of view. I will talk to Anna about that later, and uh, mm -hmm. I will... Um, but it's uh, something that uh, um, not only helps for development, but it also bring um, uh, trust to people, uh, I mean, between countries. Uh, it makes, um, mm, it bring new instruments, how to uh, develop uh, your own society. It brings uh, instruments, uh, even yesterday evening we were talking about uh, different ways of talking with the political uh, uh, authorities. Yes, uh, sometimes uh, we don't think about some simple things, uh, how it can be, how it can work, yes. So, so I think uh, it's important from the point of a uh, changing experience, uh, uh, more uh, trust uh, from people to people, from country to country, uh, because it's uh, really broke these uh, uh, borders, yes, through culture. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, the next persons I would like to show you here on stage uh, are uh, Tatiana and Galina. I take you up at the same time, so we'll... Thank you, Olga. And uh, the audience will also have a chance to ask questions for any one of these people who are on stage. And uh, yes, we have. Uh, where do you come from? Um, you are Tatiana. Yes, I come from Akongolsk uh, region, and uh, I work uh, as a deputy director for development in Akongolsk Center of Social Technologies Garant. I am from Saint Petersburg, uh, director of uh, information and. Um, uh, analytical center for social uh, and health NGOs. And, and from your perspective, now I'm going straight into the, the title of the seminar, was challenges and opportunities. And let's start with the challenges. Do you recognize the challenges that Anna was talking about? Or what, what would you like to, how would you like to express the, the biggest challenge you face in your organization? 
Uh, I think that Anna's report was uh, correct and uh, uh, Anna reflects the main challenges uh, from the um, viewpoint of NGOs. And uh, f uh, for me uh, personally, the main challenge is that um, uh, the we are uh, getting more split society, and not uh, so united as it was before. Uh, and uh, that is why trust uh, and um, building relationship uh, is uh, are the, mo the, the are, uh, those is instruments those that things that we are need mo mostly. Uh, I would also like to say that uh, Anna's report was very complete and uh, as to our region, uh, our challenge is to activate citizens and especially in rural, rural territories and uh, uh, to involve them in NGOs work to as volunteers uh, to help them to start their own NGOs or social entrepreneurship, social businesses and uh, to build networks between NGOs and uh, social developing social partner partnerships uh, between different organizations and authorities and mass media and businesses as well. Uh, yeah, but why is this? Mm -hmm. Why are they mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. as eager as people mm -hmm. seem to be in Sweden, for example? Uh, because we have a different situation, I would say, and uh, for example, surveys in a Congo's area shows that uh, some uh, citizens never heard even about NGOs' work. So they maybe heard something about Red Cross, but uh, nothing more. So um, mm, they don't know, they don't know how to help, they no don't know how to be involved in different uh, local activities, and uh, one of our tasks is to explain them and to involve. And how do you do that? Uh, uh, as to rural areas, we organize different events, different discussions with local citizens. Uh, we also provide training and consulting to those groups who want uh, to develop a project or want to develop a social business, for example. Uh, we try to fund them, try to help them either to raise funding or we organize grant, we organize grant competitions uh, to support projects and initiatives of local population and local groups and grassroots as well as NGOs as well and uh, we also try to bring new methodologies new technologies we are center of social technologies new technologies from other countries from other regions and uh, to teach uh, local organizations and people to use these technologies for example uh, we mm, we are working in within Russian Latvian project on development of mythology of uh, uh, assessment of life quality, and uh, this mythology help to activate people to involve them in different uh, local rural uh, rural uh, initiatives. So our task to train people to explain them to give them this technology so that they can follow it and uh, work within their communities on their own. And how does the public sector respond to this? Uh, do you get funding from the public sector, for example, for doing this? Um, you know, the situation in our Congo's region is quite peaceful, I would say, comparing maybe to central areas and uh, Siberia. So we, we are still part of uh, different networks, uh, also with public sector. And uh, we com collaborate a lot with businesses and local authorities, both, both their partners. So the response is quite good. Oh, you wanted to say something. Uh, so could you repeat uh, your question? No, uh, you were waving. I thought you had a comment ah, no. to what. No, uh, no, no. no, okay. So what's the big uh, opportunities then? Just I think that have maybe, a maybe a to add that in your opportunities as well. Uh, that I think that now uh, there are more opportunities for NGOs to receive funding from uh, our government, uh, and not only from the government, but on, on also different business uh, foundations, business structure understood the um, uh, importance of the uh, non-government organization in social field, and they started to support different uh, projects, uh, especially in regions and uh, in local levels, and it gives. Uh, uh, 
I think it gives a certain growth of uh, very good initiative and um, uh, gives opportunity to disseminate uh, uh, good practices that were elaborated uh, during the previous decades. Thank you very much. Uh, just this opportunities question. What th do you mm -hmm. see any opening spaces? Have, you, have there been positive changes as well? Uh, it's a challenge and uh, also an opportunity to develop uh, collaboration on the national level, on the uh, regional level and also on the international level. And uh, our organization, we are uh, coordinating now a project called Bridges, Nordic and Russian Bridges building uh, Nordic and Russian NGOs building bridges, and the short name of it, Bridges. And uh, we work together with Icelandic, uh, Danish and Finnish partners in making an uh, online platform for NGOs, uh, for matchmaking, actually. And uh, we organize workshops in uh, different countries, in partner countries, and uh, we're planning a conference also to help NGOs to find partners and to develop uh, joint initiatives or projects. So I think this is one of the main opportunities, but it's also very challenging. <laughs> Uh, and I think that a new challenge uh, and a new opportunity uh, uh, now is uh, strengthen strengthening civil society, um, making um, a relationship uh, through cooperation, through doing together, uh, through voluntary activities uh, between uh, different uh, people, different organizations, different uh, uh, strates of the society. And uh, it gives uh, strength and understanding and um, uh, now uh, the uh, economical sit and political situation is not easy, you know that, and uh, so we should be, uh, I think, um, y uh, uh, not only strong, but we, we should uh, trust each other in order to uh, stand over uh, uh, difficulties that can be uh, raised uh, in, any, in any time, maybe. Thank you very much. Applause for <laughs> Tatiana and Galina. And the uh, next people on stage, I would like to invite Semyon and Irina. Yes. And uh, and Marin, Marina. They come up, all the three of you. I think it's we'll take you at. Oh, I promise you uh, that we would not be more than three people on stage, but yeah. I think you, yeah. you can manage yeah. anyway. Um, so I would like to start to ask you to introduce yourself, what your names and where you come from. My name is Irina, I am from Karelia, the city of Petrozavodsk. My name is Irina, I come from uh, Karelia, uh, from the town of Petrozavodsk. Я представляю благотворительный фонд, который уже работает 16 лет. I represent a charity fund that has been working for 16 years already. Uh, у нас четыре больших глобальных направления. Uh, we have four big, uh, I could say global areas of work. Uh, первое это благотворительность. The first one is charity work. Uh, помощь благотворительным организациям, mm. законная благотворительность. Uh, support to charity organizations, uh, uh, legal charity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, и объединение организаций для проведения больших благотворительных праздников. Mm. Uh, and efforts to unite and unify different organizations uh, in the frames of big charity events. Второе направление это семья. Uh, the second uh, area of our work is family, work with families. Обучение родителей, обучение специалистов по работе с родителями и семьей и поддержка домов, интернатов и детских домов. Uh, it's, uh, it involves uh, parent education, education of family experts and also support to uh, uh, children's homes, homes for uh, orphans, orf orphanages. Mm. Третье направление – это оценка качества социальных услуг государственных и муниципальных организаций. The third area of work is evaluation of the quality uh, of services offered by, uh, um, yeah, uh, by different public bodies, uh, uh, government bodies and uh, uh, non-government organizations. 
И четвертое, самое распространенное направление среди некоммерческого сектора – это как быть счастливым. Обучение. Ага. Обучение. Обучение, как быть счастливым. Ага. А, просвещение, как быть счастливым. Okay. Uh, and, uh, ah. and the fourth area of work is probably the most popular among uh, non-profit organizations. It's uh, educating people in how to be happy. Yes. Yeah. Добрый день. Um, uh, меня зовут Марина Худякова. My name is Marina Худякова. Uh, я являюсь директором ресурсного центра «Профи» uh, Кировский район Ленинградской области. I am the head of a resource center. Our center's name is «Профи», uh, and uh, it's situated in the uh, Kirovsk uh, district of the Leningrad region. Как уже было сказано, у нас в некоммерческом секторе на сегодняшний день, ну, на мой взгляд и на взгляд, думаю, моих коллег, весьма такая противоречивая ситуация. Uh, as you have heard before from the others, uh, the situation in the non-profit uh, sector in Russia is uh, pretty controversial at the moment. Но, тем не менее... Некоммерческий сектор в России существует очень давно, и э, все-таки ситуация уже здесь оживляется. Still, the non-profit sector in Russia has existed for a long time, uh, and uh, things are starting to happen there. Uh, наш ресурсный центр uh, помогает uh, организациям и uh, с, uh, те, которые давно возникли, и uh, тем организациям, которые только сейчас начинают активизироваться или регистрироваться. Uh, our resource center is providing services and uh, uh, support for uh, all kinds of organizations, uh, established ones that have existed for a long time, and those who have just been Uh, наша организация помогает выбрать и организационно-правовую форму, помогает uh, с юридическими документами, uh, помогает наладить бухгалтерский учет, кадровый учет, отчетность что у нас очень uh, важно для существования наших организаций. Legal kind, uh, for example, uh, legal advice. Uh, some uh, of the organizations need to choose their legal form of work, for example, and we help them with that. We help them with accounting, with HR management, um, uh, with reporting, because all of these are important parts of uh, these organizations' work. Uh, вот э, здесь уже выступала Ольга Грачева, э, творческие проекты Кайкина. Мы э, с этой организацией входим в ассоциацию сеть ресурсных центров НКО Ленинградской области. Ольга Грачева уже в своей презентации о креативных проектах, которые они И вместе с ними мы члены ассоциации. Oh, yeah, of a network, sorry, regional network of resource centers of the Leningrad region. I think it's too, uh, too long. And what is our association? Thank you. It's focused on helping некоммерческому uh, сектору Ленинградской области в написании проектов по различным направлениям. Our association's uh, main task is to help write and design uh, projects uh, that later will be carried out, implemented uh, by non-profit organizations in our region. Ну и мои коллеги уже вот из Архангельской области, из Санкт-Петербурга говорили о том, что и проблем много, и задач много, и есть очень много вопросов, по которым мы можем помогать, чем мы и занимаемся. Mm -hmm. uh, my colleagues from Arkhangelsk and uh, uh, St. Petersburg have already pointed out that there are both pros and cons, both opportunities and challenges we face at the moment, and there are a lot of things we can help uh, uh, NGOs with. Добрый день, меня зовут Семен Никонов, я из Пскова. 
hello, good morning. My name is uh, Simeon Nikonov. I'm from Pskov. Я представляю организацию, которая называется Центр устойчивого развития Псковской области. I represent an organization whose name is the Center for Sustainable Development of the Pskov Region. Наша организация является ресурсным центром для некоммерческих организаций Псковской области. Our organization uh, performs the function of uh, resource center for non-profit organizations in the Pskov Region. Псковская область граничит с тремя, с тремя государствами – Эстония, Латвия и Белоруссия. Mm -hmm. И традиционно у нас много международных связей псковских некоммерческих организаций с этими государствами. Uh, the Pskov region has common borders with three other countries – Estonia, Latvia and Belarus. And uh, uh, traditionally, historically, uh, we have had uh, uh, good international relationships with all the three. Uh, у нас uh, в Псковской области зарегистрировано 1100 некоммерческих организаций, из которых активную деятельность ведет uh, порядка 200 организаций mm -hmm. всего. Uh, 1100 non-profit organizations are registered uh, within our region, and out of them 200 are probably active. И задача ресурсного центра состоит в том, чтобы большее количество некоммерческих организаций вело активную деятельность. И вообще тенденция у нас в России заключается сейчас в том, что в каждом регионе у нас существует ресурсный центр, который ведет активную деятельность по как раз развитию негосударственных организаций у себя в регионе. Мы можем называть это тренд в России сейчас. Тренд в создании ресурсных центров в каждом регионе, которые активно работают для активного вовлечения нон-профитных организаций в этом регионе. Это связано с тем, что государство видит в некоммерческих организациях своего партнера mm -hmm. а, и хочет, чтобы они, то есть мы, как некоммерческие организации, были профессиональны и оказывали профессиональные услуги. Uh, partnership opportunities uh, among these non-profit organizations, so they want us to be to become more professional, to offer uh, professional services. И последнее время все больше и больше некоммерческих организаций оказывают именно социальные услуги по там уходу за больными, помощь детям, сиротам. Uh, ну и, и другие социальные услуги, которые они оказывают. Mm -hmm. И для того, чтобы их оказывать качество, нужно быть, конечно, большим профессионалом. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, lately, uh, in the last few years, uh, more and more non-profit organizations uh, focus on uh, social assignments like elderly care, uh, work with orphans and so on, which, of course, calls for uh, professional skills. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, first of all, I'm very curious about this teaching people to be happy. I think we need it in Sweden too. Can you give us some advice? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, в течение семи лет мы, uh, работая с родителями, обычными гражданами в разных проектах, мы увидели определенную закономерность. And we started, uh, uh, to the, to in their behavior. Я постараюсь объяснить. Um, I'll try to explain what I mean. а, например, представим себе, что это каждый из вас. Вы 
an individual. Могу я вас попросить вас взять свою чашечку? Can I ask you yes. to, to lift Please your cup in. and come over come here? Oh. Как вас зовут? What's your name? Мане. Uh, Мане. Сколько вам лет? How old are you? 70. Вау, аплодисменты. Yeah. Well, shall we give him an applause? И первое, uh, первое uh, такое направление счастья, so, если вы здоровы, и это вот как раз именно Can физическое you здоровье. So if you are physically healthy, it's, it's, yeah, thank you. it's important. Physical, да, physical yeah. health. Okay, physical thank you. Health. Please mm -hmm. sit down. Okay. Yeah. And to um, all these ladies, okay. please of these ladies uh, over there. Ke keep your cup of yeah. tea. No, yeah. no, 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 no. So with ah, will you bring okay. your cup? Of, yeah, yes. your cup because it will symbolize something. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, what is your name? Cecilia. Yeah. Okay. Um, Cecilia, скажите, когда вы последний раз? Вы говорите по-русски. Отлично. Когда вы последний раз ходили в театр? Это было давно. Второ, uh, второе направление человеческого счастья so uh, — это культурное развитие. Is, uh, like cultural cultural насколько вы воспитаны, насколько uh, вы просвещены. And cup, 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 your cup, yes. Третье направление, Паулина. The third uh, area of health, or aspect of health. Uh, Паулина, скажи, пожалуйста, uh, Paulina, please tell us. скажи, пожалуйста, легко ли тебе Whether it's easy for you? жить uh, в Хельсинки с людьми? To live in Helsinki among all those people. Может быть, ты боишься, они для тебя враги. Uh, no, no, no. Maybe you are a bit afraid, like scared of all these people. Maybe, maybe they make you anxious. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, но вы же живете не на острове. Yeah, but you are not live on an island, not in an isolated way. So you live. Uh, Among those crowds. И третье направление yeah. человеческого so счастья — это социальное развитие. Yes. Как, is, вы, is да. как вы развиваетесь в обществе, общаетесь с людьми. Ничего, поделись. Определились своим социальным развитием. Четвертое — Ольга. В России одни из самых образованных людей — это специалисты некоммерческих организаций. Я знаю точно, что Ольга, кто вы по профессии? I know for sure that Olga, well, let her say uh, what she does for a living. Uh -huh. Я uh, закончила uh, Санкт-Петербургский университет как преподаватель yeah. русского языка и литературы. What an educational mm -hmm. background she has. Yeah, uh, I uh, graduated uh, from uh, mm -hmm. the University of St. Petersburg yeah. as a teacher of Russian and Russian literature. Я закончила Стокгольмскую школу экономики. Uh, I also graduated from <laughs> Stockholm School of Economics. И я закончила в Петербурге университет по специальности социальное предпринимательство. Это совершенно последнее. Четвертое направление развития. Хотите быть счастливым, учитесь. Это образование. Татьяна. Татьяна, скажите, есть ли у вас дети? У меня есть сын. 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 У меня ес
14. 14 лет. А если вы хотите быть счастливыми, то вам обязательно нужно развиваться в семье. Хотите быть счастливым, будьте женой, мужем. If you want to be happy, uh, become a wife, a husband. Будьте родителем, a parent. Будьте дочерью или сыном. Uh, daughter, son. Well, we are Внучкой, правнучкой. Uh, a grand, uh, son or grand daughter. Выбирайте, но so один из элементов счастья – это семейное uh, развитие. One of the okay. and elements of happiness yes. is family involvement. Ты точно счастливый человек. Being part of a family. Поставь сюда чашку. Итак, у нас получилось пять. Еще, еще осталось три. Uh, uh, Сейчас идем посерьезнее. Um, Анна, можно вас in. тоже с чашкой? So, Anna, will so you please come on your cup? Okay. Than, than yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, на сегодняшний момент uh, еще что очень важно, moment, that, uh, это быть профессионалом. И Анна как раз показывает And пример Anna высокого профессионала. Анна работает в Профессионально работает в общественной организации. И если вы хотите быть счастливым человеком, uh, so person, работайте, развивайтесь как профессионал. И оставшиеся два направления so, the two factors, really. а, это м, все, что относится к вашим духовным предпочтениям. Your, uh, yes. Рели ваш религиозный выбор. Во что вы верите? Да, и самое последнее, то, что дают в первую очередь все некоммерческие организации, is, uh, это творчество. Uh, если вы сейчас почувствовали, что у вас so что-то где-то западает, не получается, Приходите в некоммерческую организацию, и там вы все это... Очень интересный пример важности гражданского общества, важной роли гражданского общества. И также пример того, как активно участвуют в этих процессах люди, представители гражданского общества. So I just have two short questions for you. For Semyon, who wants these resource centers? Who is paying? Ну, что касается, а, а, значит, финансирования некоммерческих организаций, то у нас, ну, по крайней мере, наша организация имеет несколько источников. When it comes to funding of non-profit organizations, uh, for example, our organization has several sources of funding. Uh, no, first of all, uh, it's uh, state funding from uh, uh, public bodies. Которая выдает гранты и субсидии для этой деятельности. Provides grants and subsidies to support our activity. Uh, и второй источник — это иностранное финансирование. В основном это гранты посольств, которые работают uh, в России. Либо вот такие программы, как uh, Совет Министров Северного Страны. Programs as the one launched by the uh, Council of Ministers of Nordic countries, the Nordic Council of Ministers. И что касается кому это нужно и какие направления мы развиваем. As for your question about who wants it and who needs it and uh, what areas of work we uh, are developing. Например, 10 лет назад мы были здесь в Стокгольме на стажировке, которая была связана с защитой прав нанимателей социального жилья. 
um, I, I can say that 10 years ago we were here in Stockholm um, uh, at a conference that was uh, dedicated to the issue of the uh, rights, protection of rights uh, of people hiring social uh, at, uh, apartments. Or social yeah. social social ah. social social housing. Social housing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, ну, поскольку в Швеции люди в большинстве своем являются нанимателями жилья. Ah, uh, because quite a lot of people in Sweden rent their apartments. Uh, есть необходимость защищать их права mm. как нанимателей. Uh, there is a need to protect their rights. Uh, и сейчас в России у нас происходит та же тенденция. Многие люди не имеют своего собственного жилья, а арендуют это жилье. Uh, right now we have a similar trend in Russia. Um, quite many people don't have, uh, don't own their homes, uh, but they rent uh, the apartments and homes. Uh, и у нас в России тоже существует большая проблема как раз защиты прав этих людей, mm. которые м, арендуют so жилье. There is a big issue, a big problem in Russia um, that has to do with the protection of these people's rights. И после этой поездки у нас была организована и учреждена Всероссийская ассоциация нанимателей жилья, так она называется. After our study visit to Sweden, you know, ten years ago, an association, ассоциация, нанимателей жилья, association of Uh, social apartment renters <laughs> was established in Russia. Uh, yeah, state renters was established in Russia. Estate, uh, estate renters, estate renters was established in Russia. То есть это хороший пример того, что тот опыт, который есть в скандинавских странах, может быть использован в том числе и у нас в России. So it's a good example of how experience uh, first uh, uh, procured <laughs> in Scandinavian countries can later be applied to Russian conditions. Uh, еще одна проблема, которая есть у нас, это проблема мигрантов. Mm -hmm. The problem we are facing is the uh, migration problem, problem with migrants. Каким образом их интегрировать в общество? And how they can be integrated in the Russian society? And the resource centers helping organizations to work with integration. Мы помогаем тем организациям, которые работают с мигрантами. Yes, we are helping organizations working with migrants. Okay. То есть напрямую мы не yeah. помогаем. We don't uh, offer any help directly, but we uh, support the organizations working with them. Uh, еще одно из направлений, которое развито в том числе и в Скандинавии, это uh, медиация. Um, another uh, area of work that also is uh, well developed in Scandinavia is mediation. Uh, и мы в России только подходим к этому сейчас. Uh, uh. У нас Пока, к сожалению, не очень развита эта система медиации. In Russia we are just starting to approach this problem, this challenge, uh, because so far the mediation uh, 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 methods are not very well developed in Russia. Thank you. We have to continue with just the last, uh, finish your sentence and then we... Yeah, but that's it. Thank you very much. And in Rina, uh, or I'm sorry, Marina, this um, just a very short question for you. Why do you do this? Why are you so involved? Because I like it. I enjoy it. I enjoy working with the issues of uh, the non-profit sector, uh, the civil society. До, um, до 2015 года я 10 лет занималась поддержкой малого бизнеса uh, в Ленинградской области. Теперь, имея такой опыт uh, в поддержке малого бизнеса, я хочу помогать гражданскому обществу и развивать социальное предпринимательство в Ленинградской области. Rich experience of having worked with small businesses, I would like to um, uh, offer 
uh, help to uh, civil society and its organizations and uh, to contribute to the development of uh, social entrepreneurship in the Leningrad region. Thank you very much. A big applause for our guests. And uh, I would like to um, get Paulina back and you can also get your coffee back. And the rest of you, if you still had something in your cups, please feel free to, to come and get them again. And uh, Paulina, you have also been working with Russia for a long time from, from Finland. And, uh, and I want to hear your reflections of, of the presentations that we have heard. Yeah, what's happening in, in Russia, like your comments on, on that and if you have, if there are similarities with yeah. Finland, for example, or differences. Um, you hear me, yes. Um, so I haven't had such a long experience, but I have been working now for four or five years uh, with some uh, Russian NGOs and also in, in Russia, in uh, uh, St. Petersburg, in a local LGBTQI organization called uh, Coming Out. And um, I can tell that uh, yesterday it was... Um, celebration for um, Russian uh, revolution 100 years from that and for Finland is a uh, we have a centennial year of independence so it says <laughs> we have common factors but um, to talk maybe I start from the Finnish perspective and also similarly talk about um, what's happening in Russia in my in my eyes um, uh, we have had um, since our independence um, NGOs have worked very closely together with the government, and you can even say that it's been, um, it's been somehow in um, how to say uh, consensus with um, um, government and NGOs. So, which is quite different than than in in Russia. And uh, and it's been all about health and social issues. So same um, same in a way than in Russia. That also in Finland, the social and health NGOs get the biggest uh, share of funding, such as in, in, in Russia as well. But of course, um, in Finland it's been more open. We don't have, uh, we don't put lines of uh, uh, unwished uh, NGOs or that sort of thing. So of course, that's uh, very much different than, than Russia. But also what is similar to, to Russia now nowadays is that uh, we have um, um, new rise of uh, of conservatism and um, even some Nazist movements, which is also happening in Russia, but al also we should remember that it's also happening in the Europe. So, um, like I said in the beginning, we are facing more and more common challenges and common issues. So, we could also say like these social media bubbles of similar-minded people uh, talking online about uh, maybe they have even racistic opinions uh, or so on. These bubbles are now bursting and coming into offline and people are, we see those, those movements in, uh, on the streets, at least in Finland and also there are some in, in Russia happening. Um, what else could I say about Russia? I don't know. Um, but I can say about my experience working with these guys, I have been inspired by, by many things because we started this project more like um, uh, focus on how to um, make uh, Russian NGOs uh, work better and, and uh, get them somehow uh, tools for project management and so on. But we noticed that actually they have gone so many, so many difficult, so many challenges already. So they have actually so much to give to us uh, how to do the work. So our, I, I was even a little bit embarrassed of uh, in now thinking on the back, it was a bit like, yes, we go there and we, we show how it works, but it's there is already existing so strong uh, actors like we have here today. So that's, I don't know what else. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to get Anna back on stage. And if you can give, take that microphone, Anna. From Irina. Yes, you can take that, but you have to make sure you have it uh, close to your mouth. Okay, I'll um, Yes, so we have, uh, I know that, as I said, we have a lot of questions from the audience, um, but we also ask people to send in questions in advance, and, uh, and we have gotten a few, and the first question I would like to ask you is, what kind of support do you need 
uh, or would you like from NGOs in Europe and what do you need? Uh, thank you for this question, but can I reformulate it that it's not support, that it's exchange, actually, because it's, that's, as Paulina said, uh, I think that the last 30 years of development of uh, so-called new civil society in Russia showed that uh, we Russians are very good in dig digesting new technologies and we do it in our own way. And I think that now we need partners, not just supporters, but partners uh, who are uh, really interested and the first thing that I think we need from each other is inspiration. Because the, the best thing is if you come to Russia, you see by your own eyes and you see something that is good and, and uh, useful for you. And the same when we come to see you and we see something that help us to understand uh, how it could be and uh, also somehow to check what we are doing. So it's, it's something like this, this exchange process. Then um, mm, it's uh, exchange of information on a regular basis because uh, maybe you have in uh, Europe good uh, networks and you have regular information what is happening in other countries, but it's not uh, about Russia. So it's important to include Russia to uh, European NGO NGOs network networks. It's very strange that we are not there <laughs> somehow. And uh, if we have this concept of civil society without borders, and it's really so. So we need to do by ourselves something that we don't let big politics to be uh, to build these uh, high walls again. And yeah, you are not Putin. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, of course, it it, it uh, uh, exchange of the best practices in in various spheres. And my colleagues and Simon and others uh, told about this. And I can tell you that, for example, in Saint Petersburg, Swedish experience and Swedish best practices in many spheres in social uh, sector, as for example, early intervention or integration of disabled people, it it it, it had tremendous influence. And now our our social work is much much more. Um, human and, and um, friendly to um, um, uh, vulnerable groups uh, of people than before and it was uh, thanks to international cooperation so international cooperation have to uh, has to uh, continue. Thank you. Uh, I still need you to take that microphone because this one will go to the audience and I was wondering if maybe Paulina can help me with the mic. Um, so, raise your hand if you have some questions. I know the first, and Anna, you have to come back because you are the one who is supposed to answer the questions, and that's why you need that microphone. Because this one is not working very well. Uh, so, Shanna is the first one here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jeanne Kravchenko. I work at uh, Södertörn University. And uh, uh, thank you so much for the presentations and for the discussion. I have admired your work for quite a while <laughs> since I come myself from St. Petersburg. Um, listening to you today and especially to the presentations, um, I got a kind of a sense of um, a dual... Please attitude. hold the mic a bit closer. Yeah, Thank sorry. You. Uh, a dual attitude towards the state. Um, you started in your presentation picturing um, the state as this kind of force that uh, shapes uh, civil society to fit its um, desire to control and to dominate. Um, and at the same time, uh, we've heard from the organizations later on that they do receive state funding and that they use it um to to do the work that they do so how do you balance that the the influence the control and trying to re remain independent and to do the work that you want to do uh, i i cannot balance it because it's not balanced it's uh <laughs> is this better yeah, yeah. thank you uh, i think it's very ambivalent it's like one hand is giving, and this is what I said about socially oriented NGOs, and the other hand is taking from NGOs who do advocacy. If we have these two main 
uh, directions of NGO, civil society organizations work is social services and advocacy. So state supports uh, uh, NGOs that do social work, social services, but they uh, are not happy with NGOs who do advocacy because it's not uh, like. And uh, so... Um, mm In my opinion, the state uh, considers it uh, like treatment, like uh, advocacy and human rights organization are uh, perceived by the state as a treatment, as a like uh, intervention in their uh, policy. And so, uh, yeah. I think it's also this uh, long, long tradition of paternalistic uh, attitude of the state to those who are lower, so NGOs who were who rise quite independently. It was in the beginning of 90s when there was really, it was hunger in Russia in the beginning of 90s. And uh, people, homeless people, children lived in the streets and the and, and state was not able to, to, to do something. And NGOs, uh, mothers of disabled children who, who, who were without any support from the state, they, they started to join and uh, they uh, traveled abroad. They saw what is happening in other countries. They took the social technologies to Russia and very quickly they pushed uh, state to, to do something. And so it was very different uh, in the 90s, and then it was a uh, long time some uh, uh, partner, partnership, like state and NGOs were partners in doing many things. And it is still somehow there, for example, Tatiana said that in Arkhangelsk region I is, this, uh, is still this partnership model. But it's different in different regions, as for example in St. Petersburg, uh, there is a lot of human rights NGOs, and, and, and so we have uh, also this another uh, direction, uh, repression towards those who, who want something else from the state, and the state is not happy with this. Mm. Something okay. like this. Thank you. Thank you. Then we have one question. Manne here. <coughs> thank, <coughs> thank you very much. Uh, my name is Manne Rengboy. Uh, I'm a happy retired activist. Uh, I have a question uh, concerning your current case uh, in Karelia. Uh, social activist um, Yuri Dementiev, who has received a lot of attention in international media, including Swedish media. Uh, his problems have reached a court case, and I would like to hear your assessment of his case. Maybe Ira, you are from Karelia. This is Karelia. Dmitriev. Mm -hmm. Dmitriev, yes. Uh, you need to give the microphone or some microphone to Irina. Or to, uh, to Marina, actually. Это очень скользкая тема. На сегодняшний момент Юрий Дмитриев находится в заключении. Дело в том, что он один из... Сейчас, секунду. Из руководителей общественной организации «Мемориал» Это тот человек, который восстанавливает захоронения, связанные с Великой Отечественной войной и историей Великой Отечественной войны на территории Карелии. Uh, yeah, it's a very slippery case, so to say, a very sensitive case. Uh, at the moment, Dmitriev uh, is incarcerated, he's in prison. Uh, he is the head of the memorial uh, uh, NGO, uh, and he uh, had prior to this uh, been um, working with the uh, re-establishment of uh, graves, war graves, from the times of the Second World War. И нет однозначной позиции, это заказанное дело, или это так оно и есть. Пока вся экспертиза подтверждает обоснованность уголовных уг совершенного уголовного преступления пока um, and uh, it is uh, difficult to say uh, whether uh, there is any real evidence for uh, criminal actions from his side or whether this had been um, uh, a result has been a result of uh, some kind of uh, pressure on him from 
from above. Uh, yeah, so this was all ordered by someone. Um, uh, so far, the evidence actually witnesses about his criminal involvement. Но большое спасибо Санкт-Петербургу, журналистам, ученых, семье Юрия Дмитриева за то, что они именно в Петрозаводске, мы очень тихий город, не такой революционный, они проводили такие пикеты и митинги, чтобы обратить внимание общественности к тому, что активного общественника Карелии привлекли к к уголовному преступлению. Uh, but we want to specially thank uh, the uh, human rights activists and organizations from St. Petersburg who were very much involved in this. Um, when journalists, uh, for example, um, and people who had been researching this case uh, came to Petrozavodsk, a sleepy town, uh, not a very revolutionary town by its nature, you know, to arrange uh, rallies and meetings uh, to bring focus to the case so that people of Petrozavodsk should know that one of their local activists uh, um, uh, have been uh, prosecuted for something like this, on these charges. Thank you. We just have a few more minutes of the seminar and I would like to try to get some more questions in. Uh, thank you very much. Here we have one question. Uh, hello, my name is Judith Black and I work at the Swedish Institute um, with a funding program. And um, my question really links up with the, the previous question about a somewhat um, uh, confusing picture that you get if you're standing, if you're here and not actually in Russia and active. The previous question was about the role of state funding, the state. Is it positive or is it negative in its relations to the civil society sector? And my, my question is directly about the opportunities for and role of foreign funding, because I think we've got two different messages about this, and I understand that it is very complex. But if somebody could give me some kind of summary uh, of the situation, um, we have heard at the beginning from, from Anna uh, about um, the foreign agents, um, legislation, undesirable NGOs, and the problems with receiving funding from, from outside Russia. And I understand that this includes in the academic world as well today, which it must be a big problem. But we've also heard from the individual organizations and networks represented here that, yes, we also work with foreign funding and our friend from Finland is an example of this, obviously. So can somebody tell me <laughs> what the restrictions are? Is it about the type of funding that it is about? Yeah. Uh, are some fields more acceptable than others? Or are there Thank other you. criteria which are at work here? W I will sum up if, uh, are there any more questions? We will, can take them at the same time and then, and, and then Anna will get the final words to answer to uh, Cecilia. Yeah, my name is Cecilia and I work for Civil Rights Defenders. Uh, I also, it's interesting in this uh, divide uh, that we were talking about in the beginning. Uh, I mean, with good <laughs> NGOs or and foreign agents, I mean, it comes from the state perspective. But uh, I'm wondering, like, in, in practice for, I mean, has this also, I assume that it's also I influenced on the cooperation between organizations that are more social or oriented and, and human rights organizations that are mostly branded foreign agents. And I would like to hear if, if that is the case or, I mean, if, if there are also uh, organizations that are not on the foreign agents list, if they are afraid for, yeah, for cooperation and, and uh, in different ways with, with organizations that are on, on the foreign agents list. Because, of course, I mean, we can talk about advocacy, but many human rights organizations also, of course, provide legal aid, psychological aid to marginalized groups and so on. So, yeah, that's my question. Thank you very much. And uh, you have uh, three minutes to, uh, to answer these two questions. I would like to share this with my colleagues. Uh, I don't think that the microphone is on. 
like this. Okay. So I would like to share the three minutes with my colleagues because there is not uh, one simple answer. But probably I would like to start that uh, the problem is that you never know. And this is a part of, of this thing that you never know because definition of what d does it mean, political activity, because uh, co um, according to the law, you can be uh, black labeled as, as registered as foreign agent if you have two uh, things, it's foreign funding and political activity. And foreign funding is very easy, you have it or not. But political activity, for example, our research center that was never uh, uh, thought like that we, we are involved in political activities, but two, two and a half uh, years ago we were registered as foreign agent. Uh, because of our uh, analytical work uh, on, on the sector and, and so on. And here on this slide you have uh, consequences. What does it mean uh, to be registered as foreign agents? And the uh, 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 problem is that uh, uh, you really don't know if uh, you uh, are uh, uh, in this risk or not. And when our organization was re uh, included into register, I heard many our colleagues said that they were really shocked because before it's, it's not good definition or, or not uh, good thing what I will say now, but they thought, okay, human rights, they fight against a state. We understand why state is doing this, but why state is including into register uh, social NGOs who help people with HIV or research centers that were never uh, um, in, in uh, opposition to the state, vice versa. We were very close uh, partners to, uh, with the state. So I don't have uh, unfortunately good answer and I know that it is a risk, but at the same time, for example, when we uh, decided not to uh, close our organization and go on, we just started to find other ways of doing things because we were stopped in, for example, we don't have any official cooperation with the state now because it's not allowed for foreign agents. We started other directions of, of our activities in order to implement, go on in implementing our mission. But maybe my colleagues have good answers. We don't unfortunately have time to talk to your colleagues about this uh, on stage, but we have a promise from you that you will stay afterwards. We also have a long list of, of other questions to try to find out how it actually works in Russia. And Russia is, as you know, a huge country and, uh, and you have as many NGOs as Sweden actually, uh, 223,000 and we have 238,000 in Sweden. So it's, uh, it's a huge field. I would also like to give you an advice that this book that Sana just showed me from Perestroika to Bolotnaya about the um, development of the Russian civil society research, Swedish research, that you can get, it's, you can download it on the internet, for example. You can also get the contact details for our friends from the different Russian regions who, who want to reach out to you and to your organizations. Uh, Anna's card is over here and you can also have a look at the books that are here. Um, and the questions, we have, we have gotten questions about the situation for minorities and their organizations, uh, if it's controversial to include them in the umbrella organizations. Uh, about Nazis and fake news and how that affects you and, and the development. And there are many, many questions left that I hope that we will be able to talk the rest of this week and that you will have the chance to talk with our friends now um, over a cup of coffee, uh, for example. And also I would like to say that the next seminar that uh, Modern Forum will arrange will be about human rights as a tool against violent extremism at the Human Rights Days in Jönköping. So please take the program. We have this magazine from the Human Rights Days where we will participate. And uh, I hope I will see you there. And if not, the 22nd of November, we will be here talking about uh, social innovation and uh, idea-based innovation in the civil society. So thank you very much for coming and a big applause for Anna.